edge of chaos, two factions battled for dominance. The kingdom of Azeroth was a prosperous one. The humans who dwelt there turned the land into a paradise. The Knights of Stormwind and the clerics of Norsha Abbey roamed far and wide, serving the king's people with honor and justice. The well-trained armies of the king maintained a lasting peace for many generations. Then came the Orgish Horde. No one knew. Well, the Warcraft movie came out, it's the biggest video game based movie ever made, and a lot of people said it sucked. I've seen it for myself and all I can tell you is that it's a bit of a kerfuffle, or if you will more colloquially, a clusterfuck. But still, it was uh, at a certain level enjoyable. Especially the parts with Duraton. The other ones weren't, they weren't that good. But the movie did make me wonder just how could I have forgotten so much about the story of Warcraft 1, so I just had to replay it. And seemingly so did everyone on the internet, I am so sorry. For most of my career I've tried to buck the trend and not do shows about things that other people do shows about. But now I'm in a situation that, well look, I'm posting this right after Cinemastic did their own show about it. One that was very funny because it got a certain aspect of the game very wrong. Now about that story, well, none of it is in the game. Well, not none of it, most of it isn't in the game. The reason I couldn't remember that Warcraft 1 had such an ensemble cast and such a deep storyline was because it didn't have any of those. Lothari showed up once, wounded, you had to rescue him. Garona showed up once, not wounded, you had to rescue her. Though the part where she kills the king, yeah, that's in the game, in a single line of text. She was also half human back then, not Draene. Not that it makes a difference that she's Draene because she doesn't look Draene at all. The point I'm trying to make is that Warcraft isn't really that good of a series to adapt as a movie if you're gonna focus on story. And the reason for this is quite simple. Warcraft has a horribly, horribly maintained storyline. It's been retconned so many times, not even the developers themselves actually know what's going on. It started off simple, it started off very simple with few details, few actual things that could build a really giant big World of Warcraft ish universe. That's the thing about Blizzard, they tend to go into projects without actually fleshing out completely their universe, their games, also known as the Bioware approach, but when it comes to Blizzard games that's okay because they're not really that story focused. And then later on they'll add more details and just retcon absolutely everything because they know the story before was simplistic and instead of just making a new series with its own story, they're gonna modify the old one because who cares. But at the same time their games tend to be quite successful and prime real estate for merchandising. Merchandising like books, lots of books, which contradict everything that happens in games and in movies and in oh everything possible. So yeah, as a story adaptation that movie was about as well as they could have made it. It would have been better if they focused less on being fanboys of Warcraft and actually trying to make a movie about Warcraft. Warcraft 1, without dwarves, without elves, without guns, without giant birds and stuff that wasn't in Warcraft 1. But then again, that would have meant making a movie in which the villains won, because the orcs were the villains of Warcraft 1. The game makes absolutely no effort to portray them in a positive light to show that hey, the orcs actually have honor and no, they are backstabbing bastards to the core. One of your missions as a semi-war chief thingamajig is to actually betray Blackhand to usurp him. At one point you even have to kill a war chief's daughter because she disobeyed him and ran off with some ogres to, you know, do things that young lovers do. Namely die in dungeons because you murdered them all, you evil bastard. And see, that would be a problem because currently orcs are heroes in the world of Warcraft lore. Orcs are good people and the Horde, even though it's the Horde, isn't evil. Because that would make for some bad marketing and, you know, merchandising. You know, the same reason why Han Solo wasn't killed off in the 6th Star Wars film, episode 6 I mean, why the Ewoks toppled the Empire, goddamn merchandising. 
But when Warcraft started out, there was no merchandising, there was just a couple of people wanting to make a certain kind of game. A game inspired by Dune 2, created by the great studio Westwood, is the first what you would call RTS game. The people at Blizzard, a few of them because there weren't that many back then, it was 1994 when this game was released, had succeeded at making a strategy game that was every bit as good as Dune 2. But bear in mind that this was a different kind of game. One that put a very heavy accent on multiplayer. Dune 2 had no multiplayer, but Warcraft did. Warcraft of Works and Humans had it even in the demo. This was the first RTS I actually played in LAN. Now mind you the demo didn't have all the units but enough of them to give you an idea of what the game was like. Also it really didn't matter if it didn't have all the units because both the orc and the human units were more or less the same. They had subtle differences in terms of range. I believe the sorcerer or the wizard had bigger range and they had different spells. Well marginally different spells but for the most part they were very symmetrical. They were even more symmetrical than the Dune 2 units were. The factions from the Battle of Arrakis at least had a few more special units like the Sonic Tank, that poison missile thing, Opters, Fremen and a couple of other stuff. Warcraft was instead more basic. But it was basic in a good way. This was a very simple game to understand. And it had just about the same controls that Dune 2 had. Which is kind of bad because Dune 2 did not have what you would call good controls for an RTS. This was Blizzard in its infancy. It still wasn't at the level where they could just take someone's idea and refine it and make it better. Now they just took someone else's idea and just left it at that. Warcraft 1 also had a road system for absolutely no reason that forced you to build your base around roads and only have buildings next to each other. Now that's a bit of a callback to what Dune 2 had, but what Dune 2 had actually made sense because you're building stuff on a hostile alien planet and you could put things directly on the ground, but they would get damaged. Apart from the multiplayer and the single player campaign which stretched over 12 missions for each faction, most of them using the same map, I mean missions on human and orc side often use the same map but with different circumstances, like where the orcs used to start in their campaign there would be an orc stronghold in a human campaign. Oh and as a side note, Warcraft did try to do something different in terms of how missions were structured. You sometimes had more diverse objectives than just kill everyone. Well, so did Dune 2, you had to collect spies. But this game had you rescue captives, it had you go into caves without any ability to construct new units, becoming mostly an RTT, a real-time tactics game at that point. And those dungeons you could crawl through, those didn't come back in the series until Warcraft 3, about 8 years later. Now apart from those, Warcraft also had what would later become a hallmark of the RTS genre. The custom game mode, a skirmish mode where you could choose a map, choose a faction, even choose a starting army size. Now if you chose a dungeon map you couldn't build anything because there were no buildings and dungeons, but in every other settings you could build your heart's content. Well, until you crushed your enemy or they crushed you. You could only have one opponent in those custom games. There was no ability to have multiple AI controlled opponents. I believe mostly because the AI tended to be a bit crap. Even pathfinding was horrible at times. Also the maps weren't that huge to accommodate more than two armies efficiently fighting against each other. But still for what it was at that time in 1994, Warcraft kicked ass, it kicked major ass. This was a fantasy game that let you control armies, armies of orcs and humans fighting each other. This would have been game workshops with Dream. Had they not said no to the idea when Blizzard approached them 
or so the story goes. The story seldom goes where it was actually present at the time, but this is one of the things I kept hearing about regarding the origins of Warcraft 1. That it was supposed to be a Warhammer adaptation and not just a ripoff. Now, I have no idea what Starcraft's excuse would be, other than they really wanted to make a 40k game and Blizzard also wanted to own the property. Now, Warcraft may be a bit hard to play right now, because it doesn't have right-click functionality. Well, not for assigning commands, just for moving the map around. But I... well, you know. No, I actually don't encourage you to play it. No, honestly, Warcraft 1, considering today's standards, isn't really that good of a game to play. Apart from the novelty of it having multiplayer, there really isn't that much that sets it apart from Dune 2 that makes it escape its shadow. And Dune 2 is, honestly, a better game. It has more factions, the campaign is better, the units are more fun, the way you collect resources is better because you have a giant sandworm that kills everyone that gets near it. And for the most part, the Dune setting is a lot better than the Warcraft 1 setting, because at that time Warcraft did not have a setting, it was just a ripoff and not even a very good one. Now Warcraft 2 on the other hand, yeah that one I encourage you to play it because it's fantastic. Warcraft 1 however, yeah I I'm not losing any sleep over Blizzard not offering it for sale anywhere, because honestly it's not really worth the effort. The kind of micromanagement you have to do in this game is just bonkers mad. And while this may appeal to people that are training to be experts at StarCraft, I would suggest to most people to just watch the Warcraft movie if you want the story. Well, no, actually just listen up for a second if you want the story of Warcraft 1. The orcs invaded, they killed everyone, Garona killed Elaine, and then Warcraft 2 happened which was a much better game. And that's it. Oh yeah, Medivh gets killed too because he was insane. And no, he doesn't turn into a demon, he just summons one from hell, because at that time there was the concept of heaven and hell in Warcraft, which they had later replaced with uh, Underworld and something something else. Not really sure what, I haven't played World of Warcraft that much, mostly because the gameplay is downright awful, even though I would have liked to just play it for the story, until I actually played it for the story and realized it was written by people that really detest storytelling. Looking forward to the hate mail. So again, play Dune 2. It's a better game than Warcraft 1, even though it's two years older, they're both exactly as playable. Because Blizzard did not really put that much of an effort into evolving the genre at that time, apart from adding multiplayer and cashing in on Dune 2 and Warhammer. Looking forward to more hate mail. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it.